Just like a casting director to make sure the lighting is all correct. And oh, yeah. Up for <laughs> like, you know, the, the frame, like, you know, everything. Like, I want to see the frame right. Yeah. I mean, yep. Everything. It's like, it's like, I, I took six hours to shoot one of uh, one of these promotional videos. It was just a one minute or 30, 40, 50 seconds video. And I took six hours because I had to get it right. <laughs> and uh, I have no experience in shooting. You know, somebody who is friendly with cameras and just an actor who just comes and, you know, does it. So for me, it's very... <laughs> Difficult, actually. How are you guys? We're good. We're good. Yeah. Are you one of those casting directors that? Because sometimes we're we're both actors here in Los Angeles, and sometimes casting directors will send like a full on page of instructions of frame lighting and everything. Are you one of those casting directors that? I was like, make yeah. sure you do it right. Yeah. yeah. I, I I usually just request them to hold the camera horizontal because uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> because I think that's what I really want. I just want them to hold it horizontal. That's it. Forget about lighting. Forget about framing. Just horizontal. That's that's what that's what that's the level I am in right now. That's great. Uh, well, uh, thank you for uh, joining us, man. Uh, we really appreciate thank you, it. Thank uh, you. We just thank finished. You. Uh, I'm probably saying it wrong. Patal lock is. It Yes, 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 yeah. yes. Okay, look, I, yeah. I, 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 we yeah, said patal yeah. lock for a long time, so <laughs> <laughs> we knew that was wrong. Yeah, but yeah we just finished, just yeah. finished that. Uh, we saw you in Street, and then obviously we found out you were casting. And we've seen a ton of your stuff, um, and so yeah. that's it's really cool for us because one, we appreciate your talent as an actor, but we've also Thank never so talked much. to a uh, casting director from India either. Um, and so uh, you'll probably hear a, a couple questions about that. Um, but how was your experience uh, shooting Patalak as the um, negative role? <laughs> well, it was insane because you know I never expected that out of me. I never, I never thought I could, I could pull off a restrained character because I'm not restrained usually. I'm, I'm full of emotions and I, I there's a lot of hand gestures while talking. You will realize that. So the, you know, there's a lot uh, which I which which I keep doing with my body, with my face, with my you know eyes, with my hands. I'm, I'm you look very like how do I put it? Like I think expressive human mm -hmm. being. You know. Yeah. So for me to not express and not be myself, I think that was the most tough uh, you know job for me because and, and it it's not between the action and cut. It's actually after that. Yeah. You know. So I I will I, I would not go and talk to my friends who I know on set. You know. Mm -hmm. I would not crack a joke. I would mm. not laugh at their joke or I would not go and eat with them. So that that was more difficult because mm. you had to live like that. You had to yeah. live so that you can control all your energies and then put in when it's really needed. Because there's a lot of controlled energy in, in, the, in the character. So it's only coming out when it's really needed. And for that, the entire shooting process, that completely changed for me, you know? Mm. So were you like in the... you? you were kind of almost method a little bit doing this character yeah i i, I don't know i i still see i've not i've not studied method acting i've uh -huh. not studied i've not read books about it uh, but yeah i definitely try to build uh, um, unique methods depending mm -hmm. on the role's demand you know if yeah. if the character demands me to maybe transport myself mentally to a different new world, then I would love to do that. That's something which I would enjoy. Mm -hmm. But if the character just wants me to have fun with myself and, you know, just enjoy, like, you know, um, uh, comedies or, you know, uh, the lighter ones, then I would just do that. Then I would have fun on the set and I'm going to have fun while uh, shooting the film or the show, whatever I'm doing. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I just, I, I, I like to mix it up. I don't, I don't want to have this one process or one method of approaching my characters. Yeah. <clears throat> Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, because that definitely is the case, and I think a lot of people don't understand that about most actors. Is that yeah. they'll ask you what's your process, and it does. It kind of it varies from role to role, director to director, shoot to shoot. It's just it's never exactly the same. Right? Exactly, exactly. And, yeah. and what happens, I think, with actors get stuck in that when when you when you when you read or when you um, how to practice one particular method for a long time, you start living with that. 
and mm-hmm. to let go of that and follow something else becomes very difficult so i think it's i think actors need to be prepared for multiple formats and multiple uh, you know methods and hence uh, learn from as many teachers as possible mm-hmm. not stick to maybe one you know one teacher yeah and was that process for you to choose to do what you said where you were going to distance yourself from the crew and the cast was that something that you decided you needed to do was that something the directors had said to you to do was it a combination no actually i, I think uh, no hard and fast rule like that for the directors like you know i think the all uh, the once i had an interaction with them about the character and we started talking about the back stories and things mm-hmm. which are not in the script because that was very important to crack because if we didn't crack the back story then it was i don't know it could have been a disaster because you don't know you don't know what you what 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 you're doing there and that moment and it was very important for the hathora tyagi the character to know exactly why he is in that moment you know mm-hmm. that piece is going to make him so i think we went we went through one session and that turned out to be a very very uh, deeply emotional it's you know uh, an emotional uh, session for me and then i think we stopped we stopped talking about it we just they let me be and you know i also uh, didn't talk to uh, talk 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 to them on set much about the character because everything was there on script and then just go day by day moment by moment scene by scene and just keep experimenting the process the director he had given me a music piece uh to you know listen to whenever i want to uh think or go in mm. that world and that always mm. helped you know every time every time i wanted to focus i would just you know listen to that and i know what i am and the minute the pieces are off there have been times that it's you know both my ear pieces on my ear and they're like okay sound rolling and my voice was running and you know grabbing it because i wanted that piece to be with me till the last minute mm. and then mm-hmm. the minute action hits you are there yep so music really helps you know and so that was quite yeah. interesting music is a very powerful tool especially for for actors it just gets you in a certain mindset um so yeah totally agree with that um did you obviously you said this was a a different role for you um did you as a casting director question <laughs> the casting's decision to come after you uh, <laughs> um as <coughs> yeah uh, yeah we had, <laughs> we had seen you in street and obviously that's a totally different character uh from from yeah. this guy yeah 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 i mean so i i actually didn't i didn't i didn't uh, preempt this i never thought that i'm going to get off this uh when i was uh, when i was reading it i never looked at the character because the character doesn't have any lines and actors have a very bad habit of uh looking for lines you know mm-hmm. it's, it's it's that's what it is and so so for me i was not attracted to that character because it didn't have any lines <laughs> it was like it was, I think twice or thrice the guy speaks and i was looking at this other character ansari who is the subordinate of hatiram and mm-hmm. i was looking at him and I, i was finding him very interesting because it had layers and the guy is also oppressed and he's working in the system so you know there's a lot going on with that guy and he's learning about the system while wanting to be a part of the bigger system you know mm-hmm. that he wants to become the the ias officer or the <clears throat> the 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 most senior ranking police officers in the country and he was preparing for that so all of that really intrigued me so i was in fact uh, i was very vocal about the fact that i want to do that part mm-hmm. and i told the makers uh, and i told the makers that you know that's what i want to audition for but they being my friend i mean they know me from a long long time they just laughed it out you know they they just laughed it off and they said keep dude have you seen your eyes there's a, there's a menace <laughs> there you know have you seen your eyes dude mm-hmm. i'm like what's wrong with my eyes you know i mean i did i just did jana and that, that that's a pretty innocent character i mean so i was wondering about ki one director amar kaushik he casts me as jana because he sees a very innocent uh, i don't know face of vibe and then there is another director or or maker who is not even like you know thinking about me remotely as an nonsense or you know that uh, that kind of a performance now sudeep the writer the showrunner of the show so yeah. he went and watched three and that's when he came back and he said you know what i really want you to try for hathora tyagi i'm like what is the connection yeah, you know what is the connection yeah like, really you know, it's very i couldn't i could imagine that he said that no i just see some uh, madness i see some madness in your eyes 
and i think maybe it was in with reference to the scenes where jana gets possessed you know mm-hmm. and he starts behaving like a ghost so i think that gave him uh, the the idea of me as a thoda tyagi and that's what my casting director mind thinks mm-hmm. and i would ask him that actually i'll ask him <laughs> so 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 and then he told me and then i was like okay really and i was i was a little upset because i thought you oh, i'm getting a smaller part you know i i i i thought that i'm getting a very like i don't know and then i started reading it as an actor mm-hmm. then you start reading the character as an actor and that's when i realized the gravity of the situation and i was like oh this is going to be a very crazy ride are you sure you want to do it i already did a very very dark character in a film called ajji which is on netflix and there i play a um, child abuser mm-hmm. so that for me was the epitome of any darkness a human mm-hmm. being can you know possess sure. so for me to perform that it really affected me as a human being you know i, ha- I started having temper issues and i started having uh, uh, uncomfortable situations where you know i would not understand why i'm behaving in a certain way and that that it can do that to you sometimes you and especially especially beginners because you know mm-hmm. that that was my first film and the first whenever you're doing that first project or first acting stint you always want to be the purest and you mm-hmm. always want to you know seek the truth and there of course everything came from power and understood about patriarchy so much you know it really gave me a lot of ideas about the society and it made me you know i i started this uh, getting disgusted about it mm-hmm. and I, i i i used to i used to hate it i used to hate the set and i used to tell the director that you know i don't like the energy i don't like anything about the character but i had to do it and i had mm-hmm. to make it as hateable as possible for this particular one now when when athora came and for me it was a different experience altogether because here i had to play someone who is also been oppressed by the same society and how do you do that so that journey that i knew i was getting in for something really really uh, different and it will change the way i think i look at the world and yes it did you know it completely changed a lot of outlook the way mm-hmm. i saw the world before and the way i see the world now after performing the characters mm. yeah that's the common experience for actors who really love the craft is that empathetic experience where yeah. each character you become first of all the entering it you mentioned the the not judging the character you had to play the child abuser yeah. and then you've learned something new i uh, that's the personal experience you had how about in your outside world has the response we've received from all of our stupid babies who watched the show and our opinion of your work was fantastic you you elevated you. yourself for us oh, absolutely love the work how has been Thank the response so in, in your world ha, have you gotten positive feedback from everybody you oh, know yes 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 i've got i've Good. got a lot of positive i've got a lot of positive feedback something which i did not expect but expected from the character like mm-hmm. you know that, that's that's the i think for me it was very important for this character to be successful in terms of people showing love towards it because otherwise i would have failed i would have completely failed as an actor for me because i knew that the character was written with a lot of passion with a lot of empathy and it was not a unidimensional character and it had uh, it had the real stories of india you know our country mm-hmm. and how 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 ignorant we are towards uh, certain things in our very own society yeah. so i i i understood that i completely empathized with that first and only then i could empathize with thoda so yeah i mean and then see i remember this actor he he called me and he's he's just um, i know him generally he's not a friend he's not a, an acquaintance but uh, he's somebody who i have called for auditions and he knows me from a long long time and he suddenly called one day and he was very emotional and he was almost in tears he was heavy voice choking and he was telling me how he felt the pain and that when 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 an actor does that when an actor shows the same emotion because he understands it he understands the character and the pain and everything and the angst so when that kind of a you know overwhelming uh, emotion I, i i got from a fellow actor that was really satisfying because that's what that's the day i knew that okay something is right about the performance till then i had not seen the show till then i had not seen my performance nothing but when he called i was like okay there's something special 
and better watch it very soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody involved was phenomenal in that show. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so, mm -hmm. uh, thank you for doing it. Um, I did you. want to know, um, how did you get started in the industry in terms of casting and in terms of acting? So, yeah, I mean, I was always an actor. I, I, I have a history of theater in Delhi. I did a lot of theater there and then I came to Mumbai, um, a young boy trying to, you know, just get some kind of space to become an actor and have high hopes. I have always had high hopes for me. I never wanted to do, uh, you know, the hero's friend kind of characters because mm -hmm. it, it, we, we do a lot of those uh, here. And then what happens is the media, sometimes, somehow they, 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 they slot you in that kind of category. And then what happens is that it's very difficult to break through that category and uh, make establish yourself as an actor. So I, w I was very wary of that. So I knew that at an early age that I don't want to do I don't I don't want to do roles which typecasts me. Even though if I have to wait, if I have to wait for longer, mm -hmm. I'll do that. And what can I do? What can I do to be a part of the industry? Because there was nothing else I could do. I could not do anything but you know be in the film industry. So that was the main agenda. That was the main focal point. And then I came to Bombay. I knew a casting director, Gautam Kishan Chinnani, who had cast for amazing films, almost revolutionary films during my college years, films like Dave D, Gulal, Black Friday. And, you know, crazy uh, amount of work was happening in casting, Omkara, Vishal Bharadwaj's films. Mm -hmm. You know, all these, all these amazing films are coming out. And uh, so casting was taking a front seat very slowly, but it was taking a front seat then, a decade back, 10 years back. And I joined casting because I thought that this is going to serve two purpose. One, I'm going to earn my bread and butter. Two, I'm going to act every day. Because mm -hmm. if I'm a casting associate, I'm going to be acting with all the actors who come there. And I'm oh. going to be giving them cues all the time. I'm going to be practicing acting every day of my life and earning money for that. Mm -hmm. It's a win-win situation, right? I always thought it was a win-win situation. I always thought, why don't why doesn't anybody think like that? Why doesn't anybody else think like this is the best profession for actors? Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I really think it is. Uh, because you get to know so much. You, you get to meet directors, you get to interact with them, you get to understand characters. You're playing a female, you're playing a 60-year-old man, you're playing the main lead, you're playing the negative, you're playing so many characters in one film, one, one feature film. And mm -hmm. you're, you're able to you know act so many of those characters. Uh, imagine what 10 feature films will make, you know, give you the kind of experience. So... That's what I thought. And I, I then I said, okay, acting will happen when it has to happen. It will happen gradually. It will happen magically. It will happen with my hard work. You know, all that all that is there. Let, let it fall into place. But this is something which I'm enjoying because it's also giving me my practice, which I think mm -hmm. is very, very important. That's great. Yeah, I, I, I touched my chest out of happiness because <laughs> as yeah. is the case, it's probably the same in India as it is in Hollywood, but most of the time when you go on an audition here, the person who's the associate that's doing the reading of the scene with you doesn't even come remotely close to being an actor. Mm -hmm. And you have, to, you have to read opposite somebody who's offering nothing for you. So to, so to know that you're doing that for actors makes me very happy. Um, in fact, in it, fact, I've heard that in Hollywood, they do that. I mean, someone, I was talking, talking about this with somebody and they said they do that um, because they want that, they want the cues to be flat so that the only emotion which is uh, heard uh, on the tape is the actor's emotion. Is that mm. true? Is there any? It that might, that okay. might very well be true for some, yeah. yeah, it, yeah it, it could yeah. be. I guess they don't want, you know, you definitely in an audition, you wouldn't want your casting associate to upstage the actor who's <laughs> Yeah, reading. yeah, true, 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 true. That's but yeah. True. And that, that, that can happen, you know, that can happen sometimes. Mm -hmm. It can. Uh, because if you had some good actors and, and but you know what? I mean, I think in India, uh, we were the first ones who started, we started working like that. We started having actors. I mean, of course, I mean, uh, before us, uh, there was Gautam, Sh Gautam Kishan Chindani, whom we learned it from. We learned the trick from him. He was casting with Hani Trehan. And then, you know, these senior casting directors, they were using all these actors, theater actors, to give cues to the other actors who were coming for the mm -hmm. audition. And that mm -hmm. really changed the scene. Because mm -hmm. when there are two actors acting, the scene is completely, you see a scene, it's not an audition anymore. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what, that's what the filmmakers started enjoying. That's what everybody started enjoying, the whole process. So there are many actors now in, in casting who are, you know, the part-time actors and doing this. It's wonderful. Um, can you scooch over just a tad? Yeah, I wanna, yeah, 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 cool, great. 
Perfect. Um, did what do you think is actually in, in talking about Hollywood is I don't know if you know is the biggest difference between casting in Hollywood and casting in Bollywood or or Indian cinema in general. Um, I think the biggest biggest uh, difference is the casting agents bit. I think casting directors in Hollywood they cast only through agents and they they don't cast mm. through direct contact of actors. Mm -hmm. and that i feel is a very legitimate process and i feel that also balances out or filters the the maybe the non actors or you know the ones who are not really up for the particular audition i don't know is is that the case or also i feel that that sometimes might be a minus for a lot of upcoming actors who who don't have the right agents they might not be able to reach the right audition so there are so, always two sides to the coin so they don't they don't yeah. have you don't contact through agents or managers in india no 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 we we do we do that we do that very like we do that for celebrities usually people who have already made their mark you know semi celebrities and celebrities and semi celebrities who are just making their mark and celebrities who have just al already made their mark and of course stars when you want to cast you know the big stars and everything then you go uh for the uh, go through that route managers and agencies and everything but usually what casting directors in india are doing they're actually doing a lot of footwork they're mm. actually going to a lot of different uh, because it's a huge country and there's a lot of uh, art happening out you know outside uh, mm -hmm. outside the city outside mumbai so it's it's easier for us to you know send somebody and find those theater actors because not everybody is coming to mumbai and not every time you will find the the right part in mumbai so what do you do like if you want to cast somebody from assam you know and mm -hmm. there are very few assamese actors in bombay and you audition all of them and then you realize that okay no i'm not getting my part then you just go somewhere and you do it like that so there's no centralized system like that but i think i think gradually we will also um, start doing that in few years let's see how technology and everything plays a part in that. I wonder if it has anything to do with the money of it. Um because a lot of what like my manager would do would be negotiate uh the contract basically for the actor. And so do they just make the actors basically sign a contract or or do they not do that in India? I'm just curious now. Yeah, yeah. So if you if you're a fresher and you don't have any managers then basically it's between you and the production. or between mm. you or the and the casting team interesting so this is this is how this is how this is how the dialogue happens mm. and uh, usually we we tend to close contracts like that you know that, that's how we do it and there's a lot of goodwill in that too you know mm. you you have that you have that rapo you know each other you're comfortable with each other and you you fix a price uh, and then when you become you know somebody who is successful or popular then you start having you know, then you start keeping those managers because the managers then also take care of a lot of other logistics it's mm. not only your money it's your travel and you know staff and etc etc so a lot of that and plus when it's big money you need negotiation yeah maybe just starting yeah. off maybe you're just willing to do with less money also so. yeah got a very specific question regarding when people audition and you're 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 casting something and a lot of the times here if you, and and I'm talking about a role comparable to say Tiagi in in, in where there's a, it's a substantial role not a small walk on quick thing but mm. do you do you prefer an actor to come in who cuz they usually only get the sides you don't give them the entire script correct cuz that's the way it works here and do you prefer they come in with a fully formed backstory of their own and strong choices or do you prefer them to ask a lot of questions that are showing they care about script and that they want to provide you with what or is it a mix it's a mix it's a mix of both i think what okay. we do is we 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 give them the sides and we we like to uh, send the sides maybe a two days or three days earlier than the audition so that way that the, the actor has has a, has a lot of time to prepare mm -hmm. and b we also give them a contact so that whenever they need to ask any questions about the particular scene or the back story or whatever they need they can always call the team and then they can discuss it and the, when they come to the audition they can again discuss it i believe in discussion that is very very important because it's impossible for an actor to understand just a scene 
just through by reading it you know sometimes you can but there are times you just don't understand what's what's happening in the scene and you mm-hmm. need to understand that and of course you have not read the script and uh, so i think that's what i think my casting team it's it's been that's how we do it we always discuss the characters thoroughly with actors we try to give them as much explanations as possible for whatever their questions are and then do the test because then you don't need to really work hard on the test test basically you just you right. know, perform it and it becomes more spontaneous then well the casting uniformly for the entire show um we notice that when we watch a show or a, or a film we'll notice some of the substantial leads were good but a lot of the smaller supporting roles are are weak the totality of your casting on this show there wasn't a weak person in this cast yeah. anyone yeah. who had a line was fantastic yeah yeah i think that that was uh, i mean i think uh, we are lucky <laughs> i think luck also plays a part you know sometimes when you do this because it's very difficult it's very difficult to get those tiny uh, parts and where actors really want to do it and it's also how mm-hmm. the directors make them you know make use of them it's yeah, also sure. i think the credit goes to the directors they know exactly what to say to the actor that you know you get that moment so yeah, yeah a lot of credit to them uh, but yeah we have been lucky and for this especially the, the the good part about patan lok is that it was so raw it was so real that we didn't need to look for drama yeah know? we didn't need to look for drama anywhere while shooting while casting while you know doing anything i think we were away from drama and we were enjoying that process more um on on that process of casting smaller roles um i want to ask you this as a we've asked this to a few directors on your akashya a couple actors um but as a casting director in india one of the things we've noticed is white foreign actors are just awful just terrible usually um we 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 we've probably seen in the almost 100 films we've watched we probably seen like one good white foreign actor uh one or two so it's true is it strictly that people just you could say this as casting do you just find the first white guy that will do it uh it doesn't have to do with most of the good actors are in sag i don't <laughs> Yeah, a money thing. Yeah, We know it's a money thing partly. I I no no it's it's yeah I mean we, we yeah the money thing is very very huge like you know if you want to cast a like I remember there was a show and we wanted to cast some UK actors and we wanted to cast some Australian actors and the production just said that no you can't because you know it's going to cost them a lot the right. just the flights just the flights and then right. exactly see you guys all have the agents you have your money set and everything Mm. There's no negotiation there. You know, there's no negotiation there. <laughs> yeah, the right. casting director can't pick the phone and say, "Okay, hey, please do it for me, brother." Yeah, you know, that's not going to happen. <laughs> so, 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 uh, uh, so that's why I think it's very difficult because we have to now go through the local agents, and the local agents usually they just uh, you know sign a tourist. <laughs> and, wow. Excuse me a lot. And I I I actually I've actually met I've actually met a lot of foreigners who would come for an audition and be like dude you were in Goa last night for sure. Like you know you you were not <laughs> you were not in the city trying to make your mark. So, yeah. So so yeah that so that's what you know that's 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 the basic issue but I mean when we got a chance like for for one of one of the particular films we we were casting in Poland then we cast polish polish actors mm. so of course see those those are like proper professional ones here yeah. maybe those are mostly we find is is part time there are uh, if there are two three good actors they will get cast in every show or every film wherever they need a foreigner mm. you know that mm. guy you will see that guy doing the same character again and again and again and again and again mm-hmm. so we're trying to change that but yeah economics is a big big factor yeah. there that's what everybody sure. that's what everybody said um <laughs> If you ever do need white actors, bro. I don't <laughs> I'm have not to, to call you agent though. Yeah, no, I'm no, no, call just you. call me. Yeah, and yeah, just come straight to us. It's I all good. I won't tell him that I'm doing it and it'll be fine. So I'm not rep, so Sag, I'm fine. Sag will have to know. Good don't good worry. Good 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 good. Uh is it so, hard for you? Sorry. Go ahead. Is it hard no, for no, no, you no, like if you're uh acting in something and not casting is it in it? Is it hard for you to not judge or intervene sometimes with your casting director yeah. brain? Yeah, I do. I do that. I do that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I do that a lot. I have I have this habit and I can it's the thing is that it it happens subconsciously. 
Mm-hmm. I think whenever I say yes to something, I always ask who are the actors. Mm-hmm. You know who who is doing that role, who is doing that role. Because now for me, my casting director, like that 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 side of me, it it never stops. I can always I'm always thinking of casting people. Yeah. <laughs> because you know you're just reading so many scripts and everything. So there are so many characters always running around that you want to just you know look at them. And that's when when I go on set or something like that, somebody needs help. and if i'm acting and i'm not in a position of casting but i still always offer them and if they need my help i try to help them out why mm. not yeah you know? yeah See, my my whole st- whole point is that if i can contribute to a film whatever way i can even if by giving a, a stupid idea about art then i would do that i think that way i will just feel much more satisfied that i just did, i was not being very selfish and just did my job and went away yeah mm. yeah great. yeah yeah so what you we may have already said these things but what are your what's your favorite thing and your least favorite thing about being a casting director if you can articulate that oh yeah my favorite thing is that i i am so glad that i actually can provide a platform for a young talent mm. or somebody or somebody who the industry has still not seen and me being somebody who is not from the industry the 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 whole happiness which i get that i have i could actually create a platform Mm-hmm. where there will be so many others who i would be giving opportunity to not not only today maybe even 10 years later and and that is i think the the most satisfying part of being a casting director or owning a casting company mm-hmm. uh the most uh, the most uh, i don't know the worst will be i think i think uh, too 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 much of expectations from that see again the 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 best thing is actually the worst thing you know yeah. it's right it's the other thing. side of the coin yeah, yeah. so the, so now the thing is that there are too much of expectation from you and sometimes you can't be brutally honest sometimes you can't just tell somebody that i don't think you have it in you because you know it's a very very difficult thing to say to someone and i would not do that i would always want people to fight but mm-hmm. when i'm not able to take them when i'm not able to select them i do not know how else i you know tell them but it was about the performance of things like that so that for me to tell somebody that you are not going to get this role or yeah. people having expectations from me that i might just do something for them just because i know them that is always the worst part yeah, yeah. and uh same question but with acting acting there's no worst part yeah and <laughs> 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 there's, there's nothing about acting which i have any problem with like I I might I might sulk about the heat or the cold the the, the cold temperatures yeah. or or you know all of that I might sulk as a human being but you know for me as an actor I'm okay with whatever you know like I don't think I have any problems with it and and for me it's always as I said that it's like uh, it's like an adventure it's like an adventure because you are actually playing somebody else and you are living another life mm-hmm. and you you in your own lifetime you can actually have your mini lives so mm-hmm. as I, al- i always feel that actors have many lives like in a game you know it's very difficult for us to be ko if we keep fighting if we keep doing it it's very difficult for you know for us to be ko'd yeah mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah yeah you uh you were the casting director for the sky is pink yes yes and i mentioned that film because we having been exposed now to the better part of a year and a half intimately and in recognizing things about indian cinema we we passionately want to see a bridge being built especially from the american side of things where america pays closer attention and priyanka went on all of the shows and they beautifully didn't talk about it as an indian film it was yeah. priyanka's film and they played a clip from it with the hindi and yeah. i would just wanted to know how important is that for you you're in the industry as both an actor and a casting director would you like to see more cross pollination or for you is it like really doesn't matter if it happens great we're good in india and how, what are your thoughts on that i i think cross pollination is the cross pollination is the future i think that is the future good. and i've been saying yeah. this to the youngsters also that you know i think now we don't need to think about one particular industry as actors we need to really really widen that horizon and we have to think globally because we are watching shows you know from across the world uh-huh. i am watching an israeli show i'm watching a german show i'm watching mm-hmm. a colombian show i'm watching an american show now it's not only hollywood it's not only a bollywood 
you know the the the, the boundaries are much wider now yeah. yeah you know i i am in love with latin american actors mm-hmm. i'm in love with them i had i had no clue that they act so well and i've been seeing some of their stuff wasp network Mm-hmm. and i i was mind blown again and i've been seeing this i've been seeing this regularly and i'm like oh my god i want to learn that language and maybe try in their industry mm-hmm. too why not you know yeah. why not why, yeah absolutely why, why not and why why doesn't an actor think about like you know if i see a money heist and i get inspired by that i don't know the language but i am an actor and actors can pick up languages we have seen that happening i don't know since the inception of cinema so yep. so you know so i think that it's the time it's the time is to move forward and i hope i really hope and i really think it's going to happen it's going to happen more on the ott for sure mm-hmm. because india has a wide wide market wide yeah. wide market if we really yeah. have those international indian shows with some amazing actors from across the world why not yeah yeah um i did i i just thought about something that i wanted to ask we watched uh, a video and it was about the casting process sometimes and I was wondering if you think in if it's changing at all because they said um for a long time darker people similar to like a Nawazuddin Siddiqui were always cast in a certain role. We talked to him, he's like I've never asked to, you know, kiss the girl. I'm always asked to hold the gun. Um as <laughs> do you see that like um changing at all in terms of not in Indian cinema like them not caring as much uh as what the hero looks like or do you what what do you what do you think about that? Yeah, I think I think I think they're getting open to the idea of uh, maybe maybe seeing people the way they see people on the road. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think uh, you know th- 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 there's an aspirational casting where you want to see uh, actors who don't look like you. Yeah. You know, who who you want to get into that fantasy world and you know just uh, live your fantasy through them. And right. then there is a, there's a kind of films which is happening where you are just it's a reflection of you. It's a reflection mm-hmm. of your life. and when it's a reflection of your life so that's why the most realistic cinema when when we talk about realistic cinema that is what it is it's a reflection of what is real so then you want to see the actors who maybe look like you or maybe who look similar to you or maybe who are who you could say that yeah my friend looks like him you know so so or 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 i i know him or that that, that. so you have that confidence in the character you relate to that character more and that's mm-hmm. happening i think i think uh, Uh, uh you know that's happening at a rocket speed in fact and that's the beauty of coexistence you know that's why i say always say that fantasies are going to live you can never right. I mean that's how cinema is fantasy theater is fantasy everything like you know it started with fantasy someone you know glorifying it or uh, having that uh, magnification of you know the performances and everything that is how people started looking at uh, performance art so that will never stop but now the new thing the new um how do i put it i don't know whether it should be called an era or it should be called the new attraction point for the audience is mm-hmm. that they also want to see something very real something which is hardcore where, yes. where they where they see the realities of their life of their world they see the politics they see the you know the bureaucracy they see everything and they yes. want to see that and they, because they have not been see, they've not been exposed to it for a long long time now yeah yeah, yeah. You know, it's like a great earlier, great point yeah because earlier whenever there used to be something political it used to be for, termed as art cinema you know huh. if if there is any 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 political you know thoughts or opinions in a in a particular film or in a show they, it, it would be easily called an art cinema it would not be a commercial cinema interesting you know? mm-hmm. that's how that's how i grew up yeah that's how i grew up and there were directors like govind nilani and and sham vinegal and others who used to make amazing films and i used to always watch them and enjoy them and I, then i my dad used to say ki ye art this is art cinema you know ye art cinema hai ye this is art cinema mm-hmm. that's not the commercial cinema so that that bridge that gap somehow i think it's uh, it's merging now mm-hmm. it's merging yeah. it's becoming one and we see such amazing content because of that yeah especially on the OTT yeah platform. i mean immediately Yeah, especially on the OTT platforms because there's yeah, so much yeah. you can do there. And that's yeah. exactly one of the things that's so uh, riveting and believable about Patalok and what was so riveting about something like Gangs of Wasper. Um now uh, obviously uh, stupid babies here on our stupid reactions just jumped up and down about Patalok. Uh what other projects are you working on either as an actor or a casting director that we should we should know about because we want to we want to watch what you're doing. 
Right. Yeah, I mean, we. I mean, I think uh, casting wise, I'm right now. We are discussing a lot of projects. We are going to start something. So I think there's going to be some nice uh, lineup of projects which will start from July. Mm-hmm. All on pipeline right now, of course, because of the lockdown. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And acting wise, I'm doing comedy next, so I'm going to be uh, uh, I'm going to be acting in this film called Helmet, which yeah. is uh, going to release very soon, I hopefully. And uh, Apar Shakti is there. And I am there. Ashish or my and so that's a. Um, I have a film called Aak Micholi, which is again a comedy film. So I stammer there. So that's uh, mm. <laughs> so that's something interesting. I've never tried that. So yeah, these are the two <laughs> films, and I'm no problem. And these are these are the two films which I'm looking forward to. Mm. And there's some some work which is going to be on Netflix and Hotstar, but they've not announced yet. Yeah, well, that's exciting. Uh, we're, we're looking forward to seeing anything you do. I want to thank you for your yeah. time. Uh, we really really appreciate it. We think you're so so talented. I just want to f- finish it off with a little bit of a, a rapid fire. Uh, just uh, stupid questions, so uh, answer. Yeah. yeah, these are gonna uh, come quick. Uh, oh, I co- love stupid questions. Yeah. Coffee or chai? Uh, chai. <laughs> uh, favorite alcoholic beverage? Whiskey. Ah, what kind? Yeah, now nice. I'm interested. <laughs> what kind? What? 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 I didn't. What kind that. of whiskey? Sorry, I'm interested in the in the alcohol. Uh, well. Actually, I'm not a very fussy guy like that. You know, I, if you if you really serve me whiskey, I'm going to have it. But I like single malt. That's mm. my that's my preference these days, and it keeps changing. It keeps changing. Mm. You can never like you know it. It keeps changing with the government allowing us to buy liquor. I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, favorite Hollywood film. Oh, it's right here. It's right here on my wall. It's uh, Black Swan. Really? Oh, great movie. That's a great movie. That's a fantastic yeah. film. Uh, yeah, favorite, favorite, film. favorite Indian film? Any, any region? Any, anything? Oh, um, I'm, I don't know, but I really, I really, really love Agni Pat, and that's mm-hmm. an Amitabh Bachchan film. And mm-hmm. uh, I, every time I see it, I, I can, I, I think I can watch it thousand times. Mm-hmm. I don't know why, but I just love it. I just love the performance of Mr. Bachchan there. And I just love the characters in that film, the way, you know, everything is nicely shown. There's some amazing action scenes. And to think of, you know, they were shot in the 80s or the early 90s, though that was difficult, whatever that mm-hmm. film was. That was not an easy film. Mm-hmm. So I always, I, I don't know, I always love that a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, favorite Hollywood director? Uh, Martin Scorsese. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And favorite Indian director, if you can. If you can say that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, at the moment I have, I have one, and he, his name is Lee Joo Jose Pelisri, and he's a Malayalam film director, and he made a film called Angamalai Diaries, and you have to really, really watch that film to believe it. It's a beautiful film. Bang, and bang, yeah, bang, so he's watch this. Angamalai Diaries. Uh, it's it's oh okay. Angamalai Diaries. Gotcha. And. Uh, Lijo Jose Phyllis Pelisri. He's the director of the film. And mm-hmm. yes, I love that. And there is another director called Kumara Rajan Tyagaraja. He directed Super Deluxe. It's oh, on okay. Netflix. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. We've, so these, we've these two one. are really, I mean, these two are crazy. And you know, they're the new age. I don't, I didn't know about them. But when I started doing a little bit of research, I was like, oh my God, they're doing some crazy work. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I have to like, you know, I want to work with them soon. I hope yeah. so. Favorite Hollywood actor? Uh, Jack Nicholson. I think he's my favorite. I'm always, yeah, he's, I don't know why he always takes the cake for me. Always. Yeah. I just love him. I just love him. The way, he, I, I don't know. Shining, I, I'm not kidding you. When I saw Shining, I was freaked out. I, I, I did too. not forget that face. That I don't know. I don't, I don't forget his face. For I think more than a month or something like that, he used to come in my nightmares. And then, what a performance! Lastly, favorite Indian actor, if you can, Amitabh Bachchan. Mm. 
Big that's, B. That's a good answer. Yeah. <laughs> he is, yeah. he's, he's, been, he's been my favorite since my, since I was five, I think. So, yeah, he is my favorite. Is that your favorite? The one you mentioned before, is that your favorite film of his? Yes, yes, yes. Agnipat. It's Mr. Gotcha. Dachan. So, yeah. You have, to, you have to see that film if you've not watched it. See the I'll swag. Watch. I'll watch yeah. that one. Mm. Uh, well, I want to thank you so much for your time, man. We really, really appreciate it. Uh, it was great no, no, talking really to you. Guys. We think you're super, super talented as an actor uh, and and obviously a talented casting director. Uh, we would love to be thank the token you. white thank guys you. in anything you do in the future. Uh, and <laughs> sure, I'm going to give you personal yeah. calls. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You And it, it's very encouraging talking with you. And it's not a surprise based on the work we've seen you do and the projects we know you've been involved in. Mm-hmm. You have a generosity of spirit that comes across, not just in your work as an actor and a casting director, but in your personality. You you are one of the, the many we've talked to that encourages us, the kind of people that we love seeing in this industry who we know are not just making the industry a better place relationally, but are making it more elevated artistically. So we really appreciate yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, no, thank yeah. you so yeah. much. That's so sweet of you. So sweet of you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, yeah. you, thank, you. thank you. Have a great day. All right. All thank right. you. Night. <laughs>